Hey, today we wanna to show you how to switch to the five string bass. We'll see you inside the video. Hey, it's James here from e Bass Guitar, and we're back with another episode of our podcast interview series, Real World Bass Heroes. And I'm here again with special guest, Sean Unwin, and we're here to talk about how to switch from the four string bass to the five string bass, because this is something you've done, isn't it, Sean? Absolutely. So um, I started a show in which it was necessary for me to take up the five string bass. Tell us about that show. So it's a show that is a tribute to Phil Collins and the music that Phil Collins has produced over his rather wide career. And what was specific requirement did they ask for? Well, they suggested. <laughs> suggested? <laughs> um, rather, you know, uh, that I use a five string bass due to the nature of some of the songs, but also due to the nature of some of the key changes. So what we're gonna do today is Sean's gonna give you five tips that she found super useful in changing to the five string bass and also teach you one of the songs from the Phil Collins live show that really heavily features the five string bass. Just before we get going, I want you to know there's a completely free PDF that comes with this lesson so you can see everything we're discussing today written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below where you can grab your free copy. Also, I've got one very quick favor to ask you. I was looking at our YouTube statistics a few months back and I was really staggered to discover that 80% of people who watch our YouTube channel on a regular basis aren't subscribed to the channel. So I am on a mission and I have been for a few months now to get everybody who watches this channel regularly to subscribe to it. My goal is to get that number down to 50%. So what does that mean for you? I would just love you to hit that red button, which is somewhere around our video. And that will mean you'll be the first person to know when a new lesson goes live. And also this will enable us to make more super valuable base content and put it out into the world. So please hit the red subscribe button, which is somewhere around this video. So let's get straight down to it. Tip number one. Now about 18 months ago, you changed to the five string bass. What's the number one tip that you would give? So the number one tip that I would give is that make sure that it's right for the music, you know? Absolutely, and in the Phil Collins gigs case, why is the five string right for it? So mostly due to the key changes, um, there are some quite sort of decent key changes that require that kind of really punchy low end. Maybe detuning a four string just wouldn't quite give you. Do you find it makes certain lines fall under your hand better? Much nicer, much nicer, yeah. And gives you those fat low notes too. It certainly does. So let's move on to tip number two. Obviously it's quite a different instrument. It has that extra string. How do you go about changing to it technically? So technically it's always best to run your warm up drills, scales, arpeggios, things like that, whilst including that fifth string. Otherwise you end up playing it like a four string with the added sprinkle of a five. So do you, do you spend a whole period of time just dedicated to the five string or is it something you can dip in and out of? I think you can dip in and out of, but you need to make sure that you are warming up properly and making sure that you are completely comfortable with what you're playing. So tip number three, let's talk about the instrument itself. What specifically have you chosen in your five string bass to make it the right bass for you? Well, one thing that uh, is a feature of this bass is that I have smaller string spacing. So it comes down to 18 mil. Brilliant. And means that the strings are closer together. And what benefit does that give you? It means that I can play the bass a lot more efficiently and quickly and comfortably, as if as if it was a four string. Brilliant, so it's more like working on a four string. Does it help your hands? Because you've said to me before that you've got smaller hands. I do have small hands um, and it does help because it means that the neck doesn't have to be quite so uh, chunky. Brilliant. So when you're choosing your five string bass, look carefully at the string spacing you've got. So tip number four, let's talk strings here. You have a very specific set of strings that you use on your bass. Tell us about them. So I use light gauge strings. So why do you choose light gauge on a five string bass? So light gauge controversial, it allows me to put less strain on my wrists, which then in turn allows me to play for longer periods of time. Have you experienced injury before and things which have made it trickier? Absolutely, so I had RSI and couldn't play for um, a couple of years, I believe. So opting for light gauge means that I've been able to build my strengths back up and allows me to play comfortably. Tip number five, before we show you the baseline here, let's talk electronics. What electronics do you find works best in a five string bass? 
So with a five string, I do find that having the option for active and passive is really, really important. So what bass have you got there? So it is, uh, it, it's a Sire, um, the second edition uh, five seven, which is a PJ, um, and it does feature an active and passive switch. And what benefit does that give to you when you're playing? So the active mode allows a much more punch that you, you possibly wouldn't achieve from a passive from that low end. And it's also really nice to add a bit more tone and definition to your slap should you need it. Brilliant. So if you're switching to the five string bass, it's great to learn a bass line which really, really utilizes that wonderful B string. And Sean has a tune here from the Phil Collins live show. So this is from Live in Paris, where Phil took this down, I think, in to the key of C sharp minor. And so show us how this tune goes. Let's play it with the drum track to begin with. So Sean, you've got a wonderfully arpeggiated bass line there. Can you give us some insight into how it works? Absolutely. So we have some lovely kind of chord tones going on and a lovely mix of staccato quavers and semi quavers. Show us how the notes work. Absolutely. So it's a four bar phrase that does go around twice really? with a very subtle change, but we will we'll go through it. So uh, we start off with the C sharp and we're gotcha. going to go C sharp, E, C sharp, E. I find it best to use the open E on this occasion, followed by a lovely little run that goes G sharp, F sharp, E, and then G sharp. Lovely. Okay. And then we're gonna go down F sharp, D sharp, down to the B. Okay. So that sounds like this. Okay. So that's the first two bars. The next two bars that finish that phrase off, we're going to go C sharp, D sharp, and E. Okay, it's a lovely walk up. Followed by the final bar, where we're gonna go from G sharp up to B, and then we're gonna do a lovely little jump from F sharp into G sharp, and then finish on the B above it. And that sounds like this. So if we put that together, Brilliant. we get the first phrase. It goes like this. Okay. So what's the difference between the first phrase of four bars and the second phrase of four bars? So on the second phrase of four bars, the only difference is that in the second bar, the B actually comes up an octave. Go on, so show us how that works. So it sounds like this. What a brilliant bass line. There's some beautiful arpeggios in there. And also you get to really hoof that low B at times. Absolutely. This is a perfect bass line to learn if you're new to the five string bass. Mm -hmm. If you want to play it along with the Phil Collins version, mm -hmm. make sure you check out the Live in Paris concert from I think about 2004. 2004, yeah. Or you maybe have to even play it along with your band. And finally, Phil Collins, <laughs> I'm sure it's out there on YouTube. So let's finish the lesson off with Sean playing this once more to the drum track.
So guys, that's the end of today's video. I really hope you have enjoyed it and found those tips insightful. There are some new ones for me there. I've also made a video on how to switch from the four string bass to the five string bass. We'll put a link to that in the description below. So check that out too. If you've got any killer tips on how to change from the four string to the five string bass, do let us know in the comments below. Cheers, I've been James from eBay's Guitar and this is... I'm Sean Alwyn. And we will catch you next time.